Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to The Amicable Divorce Expert. I'm Judith Weigel, The Amicable Divorce Expert. Why? Because my whole goal is to provide amicable divorces for everyone I meet. Today's episode is about courage. I want to spend time with you talking about this subject in the hopes of making you feel, as you go through your divorce, the most courageous you can possibly feel. I want to help you feel more confident as you go through the fear and emotions of the divorce because there's a whole lot of them. My hope is to bolster your confidence so that you become more courageous in your communication, the center point of courage and decision-making to get to the settlement of your divorce and the life you will live after the divorce is final. It takes a whole lot of courage to go through divorce because divorce is one of the most fearful experiences of our lives. Divorce is a life changer, even if we're amicable. And amicable, by the way, doesn't mean that both spouses agree on everything. Amicable means that the couple would like to create their own settlement They don't want a judge to make decisions for them. They may need lawyers to help in the decision-making process. But even when you hire lawyers, you are really in charge of making the decisions yourself. And that takes a lot of courage. Even when spouses go through the emotional divorce first, remember we've talked about you go through the emotional divorce before you file for the legal divorce. In the emotional divorce, You go through all the stages of grief, and hopefully you come out of it forgiving one another. We're all human. We all make mistakes, and we all need to be forgiven by other people at some points in time. So going through the emotional divorce first is really important. Before the legal legal divorce, but you may not be completely in sync with each other on some decisions, and that's fine. At least you're willing to work together to create a settlement that works for both of you. And getting to a settlement agreement means that you have to communicate with each other. Getting to the settlement requires courage in our communication because Each spouse needs to say exactly what they would like to have from spousal support, many of you know it is alimony, to what you're going to do with the house, the retirement plans and investments, and the most sensitive discussion of all, custody and the co-parenting schedule. And every single bit of this is tough stuff. Then there's Courage's cousin, lying. When people are scared, When people have ulterior motives, when people want to game the system, and that's generally if they have personality disorders, people lie. People seem to think that being truthful will be disadvantageous to them. It happens all the time. And what people fail to realize is that lying will generally be the most disadvantageous thing. It will blow up in your face at some point. It'll either blow up in your face as we go through the last decisions for filing, or it'll blow up in your face when you hire attorneys. If you've lied to one another, once the attorneys come on board, they're going to make sure that everything is done copacetically and correctly for the state that you live in for the decision making that you will go through. So I want to tell you two stories. I mean, these are very interesting stories. Okay, the one story didn't happen to me, but it's a really famous story in California divorce. So two people getting divorced, they named a date of separation on their petition, which ends the community property relationship that they have. And then they did their disclosure forms. One is about assets and debts. One is about income and expense. And they ultimately landed in court and the judge had to make decisions for them. And it was revealed that the wife who had won the lottery significant amounts of money after the date of separation did not put her lottery winnings as separate property on her disclosure form, her asset and debt disclosure form. So this information lands on the judge's desk And he gives the entire lottery winnings 
to the husband because the wife lied on her disclosures. How do you not have an attorney guiding you through explaining to you or somebody guiding you through explaining that separate property like community property, anything in your name must be disclosed on the um, asset and debt form, on the disclosure forms? Has to be. And the judge gave all of her lottery winnings to her husband because she didn't put them on her disclosure forms. Don't know her, don't know whether she was lying, but I, get, but, but I know people. And when people are fearful, they could be told a hundred times, you have to put everything on the forms and they still won't do it until literally they're, drugged, they're dragged um, screaming and crying to the disclosure forms, to the mediation, to the hearing, to the trial, and you have to do it right. But now here's another story, and this actually was uh, happened to me, clients of mine. So two, client, uh, two people come in for a divorce, and they want it to be amicable, fabulous. Uh, the wife had two children by two other fathers, not the man she was divorcing. Two other fathers previously, but she wasn't married to the fathers. Husband is the petitioner. Husband wants to take care of the two children. The non-biological father wanted to take care of the children, wanted to pay child support. Isn't this fascinating? Wanted to pay child support, wanted to go into a co-parenting plan, and really wanted to provide for the children. So we go through the petition first at the first meeting, and then we go through a form where you have to list the addresses that the children have lived the past five years. On part of that form, you have to also list if these are children from previous relationships or unusual set of circumstances. You have to put down whether other people feel they have custody rights over the children. And the mother said yes and named the two natural fathers of each child as people who felt they had custody rights. So at that point, I stopped and I said to the mother, well, do you have court cases to support these uh, custody claims, either uh, custody rights in family court or child support rights where custody is named in child support services? And I clearly remember that the mother looked to the side, out the window in my conference room, thought for a minute, and then said, no, there are no court cases. I didn't know these people. I have no right to say I think you're lying. But I thought to myself, why would you have to think about court cases? Well, giving her the right that she deserves of not lying, I have to give that right to everybody because I don't know them. I thought, okay, well, maybe there were court cases that were started and not finished. That was a possibility. And so, therefore, you don't conclusively have court cases. Okay. But I also remember the husband looked down at the table and said nothing. So I just, by his omission and by her statement that, no, there were no court cases, I went on and filed for the case. We go through all the steps, the disclosures. I write the settlement agreement. We put in the co-parenting schedule. We put in what child support would be with the non-biological father. And then we come to the last signing. And in the last signing, there is a form called a child support case registry form that is there in case the couple wants to file with child support services as the enforcement arm of voluntarily, well, voluntarily and required, uh, uh, the requirement of paying child support. Ah, the requirement if you're abiding the law. So anyway, at that point, the mother says in the last signing, I don't know if I can sign this because there are court cases. There are court cases. There are court cases. The question I had asked months ago, are there any court cases? And the answer was no. And I looked at her and I said, but I asked you if there were court cases when we initially met and you said no. Really? Did you really ask me? Yes, everybody knows I asked. 
And I subsequently later on asked the husband, do you remember me asking if there were court cases? And thank God he said yes. It still doesn't get him off the hook. He lied too. He lied by being quiet. He lied by omission. This then transpired into such a complicated situation. Well, I was fascinated, so I spent a couple hours researching. I talked to a family law judge who said, I have no clue what to tell you to do. I really have to, would, I would have to look at the handbook. I called two attorneys, and they gave me a very complicated process to dial it back and restart everything. Then I called child support services. They didn't want to talk to me. They considered it giving me legal advice, although I'm a paralegal, so wouldn't you be talking law to a paralegal? But I didn't get anywhere there. And I finally called the courthouse itself. And through the self-help center, I actually got a fairly easy path forward to remove the children from the petition. But lying. They really, really should have gotten legal advice to start this. Everybody should get legal advice, but my my focus is on communication, lying, and courage. And there are reasons why they didn't. They didn't talk about this. There were personal reasons on the other side. He really wanted to be connected to mom. Yes, the divorce was going through, but I don't think he really wanted it. I think it just became an unmanageable relationship. But he secretly wanted to keep the relationship going, so he lied. You just can't lie. You have to tell the truth because once you tell the truth, then the the workable paths forward can be engaged. But when you lie, you, you can't figure out the workable paths forward. So please don't anybody lie. I would like to now provide some insights into the levels of fear that people experience connected to divorce and how courage and the courage to be truthful will fuel your path forward. But the first thing I want to do is define courage. I love to define terms. So courage is the ability to do something that frightens you. Courage is the ability to do something that frightens you. Number two Courage is the strength in the face of pain or grief to move forward, to muster the ability to make decisions and to live in your truth takes courage. Now let's now let's specifically look at courage in divorce. <clears throat> the expression of courage is in communication. That's where it's at. What we say And what we do is actually behavioral communication, but what we say is where things are at in divorce. The words we choose and the tone of voice we use is the evidence that we have courage. So when you go into a mediation, you don't have to beat each other up. That doesn't take courage at all. That's bullying. That's just horrible, mean-spirited communication. It takes an enormous amount of self-control and courage to put fear aside and to just talk about what you would like to see in the settlement. And when people can do that and then back up why they're asking for what they're asking, the other person doesn't have to get mad and bully and be angry like some people do in, in mediations. You just can say no. No, I don't see it that way. Here's what I would like. And then when you can communicate like that, your mediator can do a fabulous job for you. But when you bully each other, when you lie, when you are mean-spirited in your communication, you really tie the hands of your mediator and your attorneys. They really can't do anything for you. Every I'm making money. The attorneys make money. The longer it takes to get through the mediation, we all make money, but it's not fun. You know, fun for me is being creative and helping people work out settlements that work for them. But I can't do it if you are bullying each, each other, if you're crying because of that. If you're emotional, I, I, some some emotion, of course, I, I get it, and I'm fine with it. I, actually, I'm fine with a lot of it, but I'm not fine with the mean spirited communication because you can't get anywhere, and I'm totally not fine with lying. Uh, lying is such a waste of time. 
So let's look at three aspects where it really takes courage in communication. Let's start with the hard talk, the initiator and the hard talk, the one who says, I want the divorce. It may not appear to be this way, but it takes courage to tell your spouse that you want a divorce. It may not seem that way if you're on the receiving end of the talk, but it really does take courage to say, I want a divorce, unless you blurt it out in an argument. Or unless both spouses are dysfunctional or seriously self-righteous or angry, then we just blurt things out. We don't really even think about it. Or we, we cowardly end the relationship. So, for instance, do any of you remember Sex in the City? There was an episode where Carrie was dating a character named Berger, and Berger broke up with Carrie on a post-it note. Naturally, she went ballistic, and the rest of the episode was, of course, Carrie talking to everybody about Berger breaking up on a post-it note. It was unfulfilling for her. It took control away from her. She couldn't even talk. She couldn't participate in the talk. She couldn't be on the receiving end of the talk. Literally everything was pulled out from under her. And that's what Berger did. And then I don't know how true this is because I didn't research it yet, but I am told by many in entertainment pop culture that Russell Brand, who I love dearly and love his podcast, by the way, a a little uh, shout out to Russell's phenomenal podcast. I heard that Russell Brand broke up with Katy Perry when he was married to her in a text. You're taking control away from the other person. You're taking that wonderful opportunity to talk it out. That's what you're doing if you're the initiator and you break up in a way that doesn't engage communication on the spot. You're taking away the opportunity for both of you to end well. You really are. And, and so I, I hope none of you do that. And then I referenced a book last year on one of the podcasts called The Good Karma Divorce. And the author is Judge Michelle Lawrence, W L O W R I N C E. And she really spends time talking about the emotions of both spouses going into the hard talk. And she talks about the exiting spouse. And the exiting spouse goes through their own internalization and fear uh, before they present the divorce to the other spouse. And she says it takes a lot of courage even for the exiting spouse to talk about the divorce. And she said the exiting spouse it really has to go through the grief stages too because they're going to present to you the dismantling of the of the marriage especially if there are minor children and so yes the exiting spouse does have to exhibit courage when they go to present the divorce to the other spouse but the receiving spouse if you notice the exiting spouse Exhibiting behavior that's not normal for them. This is during the lead up time before the hard talk and, 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 the, and the other spouse may think something is going on. Maybe there's an affair because the behavior isn't normal. And so Michelle Lawrence talks about the behavior isn't normal, not that they're having an affair, not that they're doing anything untoward, but there's, uh, they have to emotionally separate from you before they can even have the hard talk. And that's what you're noticing. Maybe they used to talk to you in in front of the TV before you go to bed, and that doesn't happen. There's reasons why that can't happen. Like little rituals may be broken in the lead up to the hard talk. So other spouse, if you notice this, and you know your, your marriage is not really going well, give give the other spouse the opportunity to talk to you and just say, is there something going on? Are you wanting to say something that uh, you're afraid to say? Maybe you can encourage the exiting spouse that way. 
So the exiting spouse has choices, though. So while they're ruminating and maybe changing their behavior, changing those little rituals that you both engaged in as a married couple, um, here's where the courage comes into play with the exiting spouse as, as they're forming the hard talk. Do you lie about the real reason if you're in love with someone else? That's a hard call because your your spouse will eventually find out that you've been engaged in a relationship for a while, if that's the case. Or do you tell your spouse that you're just not in love with them anymore? That's equally hard. Or do you acknowledge that you're, you've both grown apart, too far apart to repair the relationship if, if you know the other spouse is going to want counseling? Whatever the reason, you have to tell the truth. It requires all the courage you can muster to tell the truth, but you have to tell the truth. And then the way you muster the courage to tell the truth is to know what words to use, how to communicate in an empathetic way, taking your spouse's feelings into consideration. And this step couldn't be harder because communication with someone who has either hurt us or with someone we feel we're about to hurt or have hurt takes courage to assume responsibility for the finalization of the relationship. So the courage comes in the communication. And we really, really have to sit down and think about how we're going to do this. And if you can at all find the emotion and the tone of your voice and the words to be empathetic, you have the best, you have the best option for a fairly decent outcome. But you never know how the other spouse is going to react. You really don't know. But put your best foot forward if you're the exiting spouse and try and be as empathetic as possible And whatever your other spouse says, just be calm. Just literally be calm and let them have the emotion they need to have. You have to allow that. You can't restrict their emotion. You can't judge them on their emotion. You just have to let them have the emotion, but be truthful. Well, Now we talk about being the recipient of the hard talk. The recipient of the hard talk has to have courage too. It takes courage to hear that your spouse wants a divorce from you. Oh my God, how, how hurt can we be listening to those words? To listen to your spouse explain that they no longer want to be married to you and to accept that decision takes a tremendous amount of courage. I've told my story many times, so I knew the marriage wasn't good. Neither of us had talked about counseling, and we had separated for a while. We met on the circus, and he joined another circus and left for a while. And then he asked me for a divorce. He had started re- started a relationship with Carmen, the baboon trainer. And as funny as this may sound, and it does sound funny, Carmen was a really nice gal. I liked her. I didn't hate her either. After I knew they were having a relationship, I didn't hate him either. Weirdly so, I didn't hate him either. But I literally almost passed out. We were in a restaurant and I had to run to the restroom and put cold compresses on. And then I had to come out and continue the talk. It took so much courage to do that and to accept that the marriage was over. And that's what the recipient has to do. It just takes courage to listen to somebody say the divorce is over. And now we come to the third hard talk, telling the children. To look at your children and explain to them that their lives will be dramatically changed through divorce should be a very hard talk. But I'm unconvinced that people understand that their children are byproducts of the divorce and shouldn't just bounce up and say, okay, fine, that sounds cool and groovy. Tell me the changes that my life will have to go through and I'm on, I'm on board with this. Listen, if you fight a lot in the house, the children will probably be quite relieved 
that the household will no longer have the fighting. But they have no clue what's in store for them. Because if you're fighting a lot and then you have two households, the fighting isn't going to end. The fighting is going to continue. It's going to uh, appear in different ways. And the children, by the way, will probably be used as weapons, even if they're used as communication tools. They're going to be used in ways they should never be used. I think people are in such pain accepting that their divorce is imminent that they can't empathize with their children's pain and fear. I really don't think that's possible because what I listen to in the mediation is quite shocking. Well, we have to tell the kids. We we really need to tell the kids why we're getting the divorce. No, you don't. You absolutely don't and should not accept, accept if the children have to deal with substance abuse. So if one of the reasons for the divorce is substance abuse on one parent's side, first of all, that parent, if they're still engaging in that substance, cannot have the children on their own. The children or the children, if they're old enough to be able to fend for themselves, if they're teenagers, then you have to imbue the children with the power to be independent and to be able to leave the parent if the parent is under the influence. I mean, there's there's just a huge conversation about this. But the only time the children should really be informed about why the divorce is happening or a byproduct of the divorce if, is if there is substance abuse. But other than that, if there's an affair, if there's anything else, they absolutely do not need to know the reason for the divorce or that the divorce is the fault of one parent. That's, that's cruel and horrible because the children want to love both parents. That's the children's role. They just want to be loved by both parents and they want to love their parents equally. So even though the divorce has nothing to do with the children, they must accept it and all the changes that the divorce will bring to their lives, which is back and forth between their parents' homes a loss of time with their friends. I don't know, none of this sounds like a picnic to me. Fear over not having their things with them, like homework, cell phones, computers, clothing. Your children's lives are being changed forever by the divorce, and they too need the courage to deal with it. And you need to support that courage. You need to let them talk about their fears Because when we talk about fear, it actually is a release of energy and and the emotion we hold inside. Our bodies actually feel better when we can say what makes us fearful. So every word you say, every put down of your spouse, every display of negative emotion, take a toll on your children. Never, ever forget that. Muster all the courage you can to make sure your children feel safe and loved. So after all the hard talks, after the divorce is now in progress, just please be mindful of this. It takes courage to be a single parent, and it takes courage to be a single person post-divorce. Even though you might be co-parenting, meaning you're having communication and discussion with the other spouse, you're still on your own when it's your time with your children. And to look for a job, if you were the stay-at-home parent during the marriage, that takes a heck of a lot of courage, especially if you've been out of the workforce for a long time and the amount of money you're going to be getting on spousal support and child support isn't enough to cut it. You're going to have to look for a job. Or to increase the money you make, if you've had a part-time job, just adding on to that, you know, that's a frightening thing. And as we get older and the way people are hired and interview, it's so crazy now. It's so impersonal, the way people look for jobs. I I, 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 thank God I don't have to do it now but because I don't know what I would do. My heart goes out to every, every parent, generally mom, but every parent who has to go and get a job or increase what they make. It's hard. But to have your children out of your control in a co-parenting schedule 
with the other parent, especially if your children have special needs, whether they're behavioral special needs or dietary, physical, medical special needs. This takes unbelievable courage when they're out of your sight, out of your control. It's just so hard. The better you can communicate with your spouse and not sound like a nagging spouse, but just try and engage your spouse in a mutual discussion about how to support your children's special needs. And just share with your spouse um, remedies you have found to be helpful without blaming and without sounding like a nag. I mean, that's so hard, right? It is. But the way we communicate, the tone of voice, it means everything. And sometimes doing it on text is not the right way. You know, maybe that's the only way you can communicate. Maybe you have to use My Family Wizard. You know, maybe you have to use other other um, online forms of communication. Maybe you have to go through an intermediary. Who knows? But it's the words we choose, the tone of voice we use, and the empathy that we can draw on that will really make this process the easiest it can be. And it takes courage to be the person we really want to be, to speak and live authentically, and to do the work we really want to do. That in general just takes courage, right? Divorce is a new beginning, though. Divorce is a game changer, and it's a negative game changer, but it's a positive game changer as well. And it should be used in the best way possible to make decisions that can reframe your life entirely as you would want to live it. So we can use challenging situations like divorce, um, like a health issue, like losing a job. We can use things to our greater good. We really can, and it is my philosophical feeling and view of life that if we look at really tough, game-changing events to our benefit, to see where we can enhance ourselves, to see how we can grow through these events, then life is fair and we have used these things to our best advantage and we have learned and we have grown through them. And finally, it takes courage to live the life you dream to live, even if that means choosing divorce. Please take these words to heart. Think about them. Think how this can positively change your lives. Everything we've just listened to on Courage. I'm the amicable divorce expert. Thank you so much for listening to the program. I hope all of this is an advantage to you. Write me. Tell me your ideas. Judith at the amicable, excuse me, Judith at amicabledivorceexpert.com. Judith at amicabledivorceexpert.com. Please share your feelings with me. Give me a topic idea and subscribe. Share this and subscribe. I want you both to have the best experience possible. Take care and talk to you next week.